This is the audio of a talk, Sex Work 101, given by a member of the Workers' Solidarity Movement after a WSM branch meeting in April 2017. The speaker's name has been redacted for privacy. If you live in the island of Ireland and would like to hear about such talks and other upcoming WSM events, then go to the WSM website and register on our email contact system, where you can receive updates particular to your area and interests. That's www wsm.ie forward slash user forward slash register. Here's the talk. It's 15 minutes long, followed by a 20 minute question and answer session. Mr. Well, Ahmad, welcome. welcome. <laughs> All right, so as Tom said, my name is uh, I go by she and her pronouns, and I am a sex worker, among many other things that I do. So the reason why I wanted to do this presentation is because I find that the support with sex workers and working with sex workers from an anti-capitalist stand is absolutely necessary. Um, and because there aren't many sex workers that I know of, you might be, I don't know. So do you? <laughs> um, I, ju I just kind of wanted to present what sex work is and why it matters, what's the difference between sex trafficking and sex work, and so, yeah, so let get, let's get into it, all right? So, Picasso, and let's define sex work. So, it's an umbrella term, uh, so what that means is that there's many types of sex work, there's not only one type. Usually what people think of sex workers, they tend to think of street walkers, which we don't call them anymore unless they um, actively identify as a street walker. That's not really for people who aren't sex workers to say. We switched from prostitute because prostitution is kind of similar like sodomy. Like gay people don't call themselves sodomizers, right? Like it's kind of like sodomy laws are meant to be around anal sex and prostitution is made to be around the trade of sex. But you know, identifying somebody as a prostitute is objectifying. Like, you're identifying to, you know, like, you're an engineer, but, like, that's not what all people call you. It's not like, hello, I'm Tom the Engineer. So, yeah. Um, and it involves really anything from being a webcam model to stripping to, you know, like, being... I'm, I currently work at a massage parlor. I've done many kinds of sex work, um, but because Ireland has a lot of cheap people, so they don't really like to pay a lot for escorts. Um, escorts, Ireland is actually considered a dead zone for sex work. Sex workers internationally will come here. They just don't make the, as much money as you can make in the States. It's actually crazy. But, um, you know, Irish men love massages. So that's my, <laughs> that's my current job. Um, so the importance of sex work to WSM, it's work. That's, you know, that's pretty much the primary thing. Marginalized people make up the majority of sex workers. And what I mean by marginalized people, I mean uh, LGBTQ plus people, I mean people of color, I mean, um, you know, religious minorities, uh, you know, the reason why I'm using actually men and male imagery is actually kind of to confront the idea that only women do sex work. Um, most of the people who tend to be criminalized for doing sex work are people who are whose bodies are actively sexualized. So I'm white passing, I have a lot of privilege within that when I'm walking down the street, people are not likely to think I'm a whore, you know? But if I were a black trans woman or if I was any other, you know, woman of color or like a non-binary person of color, non-binary white person, I would tend to be targeted for that kind of stuff. So this kind of work has always been an access point for people who had um, visually marginalized identities and who had, uh, you know, especially like migrants, um, who did not have access to the regular market and would actually be able to make a living off of sex work. I was undocumented in Canada for three years. I, I lived seven and a half years in Canada. This is where I got my lovely accent. Um, and sex work saved me. Sex work keeps saving me. I have, it's also in terms of marginalized people, uh, mental illness, disabilities. So I have complex PTSD, which makes it really hard for me to work from a nine to five because I feel trapped. So I can't leave, I can't. And the flexibility of sex work allows me to kind of you know, if I need to take a break and if I need to step out and go to eat, nobody's going to tell me, no, don't go, you know? And that's really, really, really necessary. Um, and so, you know, in terms of sex laws, they really do not promote um, sex worker safety. They kind of just, like, focus on, like, 
oh, this poor woman is selling her body, or utter bullshit lies that sex workers have across the board being like, no, that's not what's happening. Um, and, you know, there's always this concern about selling your body, but capitalism inherently objectifies human bodies to the point where, like, well, we don't really care about you. We're going to overwork you for 9.25 euro an hour. And kind of, you know, oh, you need to eat? Well, you know, you're going to get a half hour unpaid break. So the reason why I also wanted to mention the highlighting the difference between sex work and sex trafficking is the fact that, like, when we think about farmers, we don't think about transatlantic slavery. Transatlantic slavery was 400 years of black people being forced to farm. Uh, cotton picking is pretty much what got the U.S. to be it, the wealth that it is today on the backs of slaves. And yet, when we think of farmers, when we think of, you know, other, you know, uh, most of our clothes is made of cotton, we don't think of slaves. We don't think of bodies that were trafficked actively trafficked and the same thing goes with like any other industry any industry you have there's going to be uh people who are not treated as people and that's an inherent aspect of capitalism and the problem isn't with the industry it's not with the with the work uh the work is going to be demanded no matter what but the issue is with the system of capitalism and we know we all know that we're here um and i think that's why it's really important that if we are to kind of support sex workers and kind of like use you know sex workers as an ally to WSM or whatever you you want to kind of make it into, it's important to always highlight that difference and to when we do talk about sex trafficking to talk about capitalism as a reason for why that happens and not because sex work is any inherently different than any, any other kind of work. Uh, so. Let's talk about some types of sex work laws. So we have full criminalization, meaning that the selling, buying, and third parties are illegal. Third parties being pimps, brothels, stuff like that. Um, most of the world has full criminalization. Um, so including like most of Africa, most of Asia, um, most of S South America, and the United States. Uh, so the United States, other than Nevada, fully criminalized. Um, partial criminalization, buying and selling, would be legal, but brothel keeping, soliciting, so uh, on the street, that would be illegal. Uh, and uh, that's what most of Europe is and what most of Europe used to be. Um, so, for example, Ireland was up until two months ago, it was partially criminalized, and now we've switched to the Swedish model. So, the Swedish or Nordic model may, makes selling legal, but makes buying and third parties and everything else illegal. Then we have the number four, which is um, in the Netherlands, Germany, a few other countries. Um, it's legalization. So it means registration, forced health checks, expensive licenses, designated sex worker areas. So like you can't do sex work from just anywhere. There's specific neighborhoods. There's specific uh, times where you can do sex work. It's not, you know, it's not, it's, it's very much regulated by the government. Um, the fifth one is actually brand new and it, well, brand new to a degree. Uh, so in 2006, New Zealand uh, started the criminalized sex work. And how they did it is that they actually called sex workers and spoke to them and asked them, what do you want? And 96%, and this is a very high number, of sex workers in New Zealand, are they feel that uh, the law protects their rights. You cannot get those kind of numbers here. You cannot get those numbers in most of the world. Um, and so that's pretty much what most sex workers want. The problem with legalization is that it creates a two-tiered system. So what happens is if you're white, if you come from a middle-class family, if you have any other sort of privileges, you can afford to register. The government in Germany, the government in, Netherlands, in the Netherlands made it specifically expensive to get those reg registration licenses. And in the Netherlands, for, for example, when you're registered, anybody can see your taxes. So anybody can know how much you make, what do you do? And that can become a problem for multiple reasons, whether you're in abusive relationships or your parents are shit, you know, anything and anyone can find out about you. Um, and what happens is then you have the second tier system, which is migrant women, uh, you know, LGBTQ folks who cannot afford to, you know, 
uh, registration and licenses, uh, they usually take a long time. This was also um, in partial criminalization in Canada. They used to have parts of registration and licensing. So um, if I was a legal Canadian, I could have gotten a license to do BDSM work, which would have made my work legal. But it's between $500 and $800 to get. If you're, you know, if you need money that night, if you need that money to feed your child that night because somebody kicked you out, like your abusive husband kicked you out of the house or whatever, how are you going to make that kind of money legally? You're not. Um, so that's the problem with legalization. That's why most sex workers are like, no, we just want it to be fully decriminalized and to sex workers be protected as workers. Um, so sex work laws in Ireland... So it's changed uh, this year. It actually changed two months ago. And working in the industry in the past two months has been interesting because for the first two weeks when the law was passed, we barely had any clients. We had no idea what was going on. We were just like, dude, like, you know, the guards are not going to come. But we were like, shit, like, this is... the demand came right back. The demand came right back. Uh, you know, they have conversations with us where it's like, you know, have the guards come in? My boss literally went to the guards because she's a fucking idiot. And she was like, you know, we are here. Like, my boss is delusional. Keep this in mind, okay? She doesn't understand that she could go to jail for pimping charges. But anyways, she went to the guards. She told them, we are here doing this and this service. We just want to make sure that you know that we're here. First of all, they knew we were there. They don't give a shit because we are not high enough on the scale. Like, they're usually... like. In terms of targeting, they don't target massage parlors unless it's the African massage, Chinese massage. So they're targeted more because they're people of color and they're targeted more um, because they're, they charge less and then they charge more inside the room. So it's like, you want a blowjob, it's 50 euro extra. You want this, it's extra. We don't do that in, in, in my salon. In our salon, it's kind of like high class kind of bullshit, like... You come here and you have an elite experience. Like, you know, so they'll ask, but we don't do that. We only give them a hand job and like, if you really like them, you blow them. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. And so the issue is the new sexual offenses law, and they have multiple things that they include in the sexual offenses law that kind of uh, equates prostitution with like child uh, abuse, like sexual abuse, because it's like under all of those offenses, they include children and then adults who, you know, consent and do legal work. Um, so providers aren't criminalized unless providing within a brothel or on the street. Um, so I kind of work in a brothel on most days because if there's two of you, it's considered a brothel. So if there's, it's me, if me and my girl, we go and rent a, and rent a hotel room, which we've talked about before, we could easily become targets. For the police because if one of our clients becomes violent mm -hmm. and this has happened before this had, this hasn't only happened to friends of mine this has happened like to most sex workers at one point we've had you know people threatening and being like you can't do shit because you're a brothel if you call the police you'll get in shit i'll run away they know that and that empowers them and like the swedish model is making it more and more dangerous because it's like they're putting themselves at such a high risk because they could potentially get... So they don't really care what's happening to you. You can't... You know, it means, like, you can't get a full name when, you, when you're seeing somebody. You can't, you can't look them up online and see what's wrong. You can't go on ugly mugs and see for a report. Um, so and within these two months, there's been reports of clients pretending to be guards. So the guards, these clients come in, they pretend to be guards, and they get services for free, and they leave. Um, I had a client calling and saying that they've been tapped our, tapping our phone and that they know what we're doing and that there's going to be guards at, at our place. I had a panic attack that day at work. Nobody fucking came. But the issue is they know they have that kind of power to be playing with you and playing with your safety. And so, and that's why it's a really big problem that the Swedish model has been normalized. And now what... what um, the Irish government has been saying is that this is an experiment because apparently it's worth to experiment with sex worker lives for two years so 
this bill came in 2014. For three years, Sex Worker Alliance Ireland has been fighting every fucking day, being like, listen, this is not okay. Amnesty International is showing you that, like, you know, um, criminalizing sex, uh, the Swedish monitor doesn't work. It doesn't stop anything. It's actually making it more dangerous, blah, blah, blah. Don't give a shit. So, so yeah. Um, I left a little bit of resources just in terms of, you know, there's an article on Irish men continuing to pay for sex even though it's against the law. Uh, Ugly Mugs reports uh, law sex, uh, sex workers really want, which is a really good TED talk. And some books, so I can send that. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, I'm really eager to answer them and talk about them. What's up? That, um, that really restrictive definition of brothel is to, to a more deeper. Is that, uh, is that the Swedish model or is that the Irish model? So this is, no, it's actually widespread. So yeah. anywhere in the world you go, a brothel is two or more people. So if you're working by yourself, you're an independent sex worker. So you're fine. But the moment there's two of you, the idea is there's somebody pimping you. So, yeah. So, and that's when it becomes dangerous and it becomes like sex trafficking because somebody's controlling you. But see, we don't have that idea when we're talking about other jobs and having managers. But that's a different conversation, you know? Not getting exploited at your job, just me. So, anyone else? Don't be shy. Yeah. Is PTSD a big issue? Because I remember reading a, a thing, you know, Chris Hedges? I mean, uh, he's kind of an American leftist, uh, somewhat ev evangelical in mm. the background. That, mm. But he kind of talked about interviewing people who've worked in the pornography industry, mm. and there's a lot of PTSD there. Is that a big problem? Do you? Well, I didn't find it. I have complex PTSD because I have very abusive family. So yeah. I escaped my family through sex work. Actually, sex work was what helped me because I was homeless for six months in Canada before I came to Ireland. Yeah. And I had to, I did, well, I didn't have to, but I did like a lot of sex work that helped me get some money. And so I moved to Ireland. Yeah. But no, like, I think it's kind of like, I think people who do sex work are more open about mental illness because it's kind of like, it's, it's a normal aspect of life. And I think like, I don't know, like, so many people have mental illness in every single industry and it's like when i was working at this bar or oh, i'm lying sorry it was like a restaurant <coughs> bar. um i was working there for six months i was working 40 to 45 hours a week 9 25 an hour i was having panic attacks uh and nobody gave a shit like it took them three hours to call the ambulance for me um, because I really wanted to speak to a psychiatrist, I couldn't go back to that kind of job. That job made me more anxious than this fucking job that's actually illegal. You know? And that says a lot about capitalism, you know, treating people like shit, treating people like objects, because it's like, you know, like my manager would flat out say to me, well, if you're sick, then don't work. And I'd be like, I need to work to eat, man. Like, what, you know? Uh, I I wouldn't be able to save a hundred euro a month when I was working that job. I saw I saved way over that doing this, you know. So yeah. Anyone else? Oh, thank you. What do you think is uh, the Nordic model mm -hmm. is the current situation? Mm -hmm. and prior it was partial due mm -hmm. to partial colonization. Mm -hmm. So in your opinion, experience, which is actually very theoretical, between these, like, is it worse? Um, partial criminalization because selling and buying is legal so um the the issue is always with making brothels illegal because sex workers save sex workers there's nobody who cares about us the way that we care about us you know um there's there's multiple sex workers who who get killed under the nordic model because there's more of a th like you have to make johns feel safe if they don't feel safe, you're at fucking mm -hmm. risk. So, in that scenario, absolutely partial so criminalism. It's, it's worse. It, it's worse. It's way worse. And this is what sex workers in Canada has been saying. Canada introduced the Swedish model in 2013. Um, one of the leaders, she actually killed herself. Unfortunately, she was struggling with depression for a very long time. But um, she was, you know, calling for decriminalization for the longest time. And I think, you know, she was, she felt really defeated when that shit happened. So, 
Yeah, you know, decriminalization all the way. All the way. You were... Yeah, um, I'll just turn it off. Great to have you here. Because I'm in circles, you always hear people's opinions on sex work and not actually... Fuck them. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah, I was just asking, what is the next step for you? I suppose I'm doing this way um, for sex working now. Just, I, I presume it's to get back to maybe, like, the key is for decriminalization. But would it be getting back to a partially criminalized model or just... No, like, going, like, I... Nobody's happy with part like again. You know, she asked me a question in terms of like between the two. Obviously, I would just, you know prefer the prior, but no, it's like you know, Sex Workers Alliance has been saying to the go Irish government for years. It's like you know, you're. It's not that they're not hearing it. It's they're purposely just just being like no, and and that's a bigger issue within the country and and you know, Catholic morality and like this bullshit care about like family and stuff. But you know. Unless, you know, you're a nun killing babies and fucking, you know, b burying them within, like, a nunnery or whatever they're called. <laughs> but, yeah, no, full decriminalization. And, and I think, like, that's that's what I would like to see with WSM is to kind of, uh, you know, if possible, work with the Sex Workers Alliance. Um, you know, show active support. And, you know, anytime there's, like, a... The, you know, demonstration for us to go and to be like, yeah, you know, WSM supports uh, decriminalization 100%. Uh, so, no, you're fine. It just, so, how did it happen that it became, it changed to the Nordic model, right? Because I'm, I'm following most of you guys on Facebook and stuff like that. I'm like, I follow you guys. So I'm not, I'm not part of Sex Worker Alliance Ireland. Um, I, I definitely like follow them, and I'm like. Um, I, I've met with the main girl and stuff, but like, I haven't been to enough of their meetings and stuff. I'd love to, but yeah, sure. I'm just an independent sex worker, yeah, cool. relatively. Cool. Yeah. But um, yeah. So like, who's who? I mean, I, we know the political stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Politicians and moralizing. Mm -hmm. But it, it, are there people within the sex industry who are going for this, or were they co-opted into it, or? I mean, it is crazy. Like, mm -hmm. this is not what sex workers want. There's just yeah. no consultation yeah. at all. Yeah. Sex workers None. All. Zero. Like. Again, this was even supported by Amnesty International. Yeah. Amnesty was like, no, it doesn't work. Like, the Amnesty International brought a report. So it's a huge report about sex worker, human trafficking, everything. And they were like, even if you want to stop <coughs> sex trafficking, you have to decriminalize sex work. Because no sex trafficking victim will come to you if it's criminalized. It's not, like, not even if... if um, you know, if there's no consequences for the for the person who's being trafficked, because potentially they were still making money, uh, potentially they felt more stable there than going to a church who's cleansing you from your sins of being like a fallen woman, because that's what's been happening. You have trafficking victims who have been actively been trafficked, brought into churches or other community centers that are led by churches, and being like, "Well, what has happened in your life that made you suck dick for twenty euro?" Like it's like. <laughs> You suck dick for free, man. Like, it's like, I'm sorry that, like, some people are smarter. Like, it's just, you know, it's kind of like, why do you do what you do? It's like, like, yes, we can discuss, like, the, the issue with kind of uh, capitalizing off of intimate issues. But, like, on that basis, we would have to discuss capitalism in general. And I'm really, I would really be excited to have that conversation. But in a system that exploits abuses, marginalizes people to this degree, I don't want to have that conversation mm. because it's not real. It's it's not. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really it. Anyone else? If not, I'm chilling. I'm done. Oh, oh. Mentioned, I was just wondering how uh, sex workers uh, uh, organize the Nile that you Organize what? How do they like organize and, you know, like you gave this brilliant talk, you know, and I'm just kind of wondering you know, is there any uh, movement mm -hmm. and kind mm -hmm. of how can mm -hmm. we support and yeah. you tell a little bit more? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sex Workers Alliance Ireland, yeah. yeah. So would you talk a little bit more about it? Yeah. And what kind of, you know, moods are within there, kind of what yeah. is sort of seen as steps? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Sex Workers Alliance Ireland is um, this... I'm not sure how long they've existed for, but I know that they're a very powerful group 
well, it's not, you know, uh, of sex workers. So it's only led by sex workers. All, all the people who are parts of it are either sex workers currently or used to be. Uh, and they, I think they meet at least once a month. And depending on the law that's coming up, they have different demonstrations. So they have a website. You can just look up Sex Workers Alliance Ireland. They have a website. They work with um, doctors and like harm reduction workers who provide help for sex workers, whether it's free condoms, whether it's, uh, you know, if you have drug and addiction problems, uh, they provide that kind of help. Um, so, I mean, the last time there was something... Oh, it was for Christmas and it was right about as the bill was being passed through I don't know if you've seen any of those pictures I'm mean, like I just know that like basically they, what they did is they tend to this is me being bad what's the name of that statue of that woman yeah so they're always meeting around there and they have like a few games and kind of like talking about the law and how the law uh, uh, affects sex workers and they were talking about like you know to random people and just kind of educating um, people in general to have an understanding of what sex workers do who sex workers are um, you know um, that they're not here planning to give HIV to everybody like that's not what happening most sex workers are actually you know getting tested far more often than the regular person um, so I think Sex Workers Alliance, what they've been doing is they've been either demonstrating actively, like as, as you know, if a law was being passed, or what they've done is focusing on educating regular people and just kind of being like, this is what it is, blah, 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 writing articles uh, and stuff like that. So, not sure what the next plans are because of this. Um, so you can again you can check ugly mugs because ugly mugs works actively within the uk and ireland um sex workers alliance ireland you can check them out on facebook you can check them out on twitter you can check them out on they have their own website uh so yeah is it possible to kind of get access i can uh, send you this to, to the, uh, the slides absolutely so mm -hmm. absolutely them. no i would I, again if anybody wants them okay. please give me your email whatever yeah. and I'll send it to you. All good? Uh, <laughs> I was one of the people who crashed, uh, I think uh, it was 2014, yes. Yeah, so I moved my, I changed my perspective quite radically. Mm. Uh, yeah, 2014, we, we <laughs> yeah, crashed into, uh, I think, a session on sex work uh, led by Selma James. Mm. Uh, and I mean, I'm just wondering that time. I mean, representation of sex work in Ireland for me was, as you mentioned brilliantly, quite privileged. You know, so there was the one narrative. You know, yeah. so you yeah. were a um, fluent English speaker if you're a citizen or from mm. other kind of first world country yeah that's my experience and that's the kind of frame yeah i oh that's what it is you know yeah. I, I define what yeah. it is you yeah know? and and that's also you know you have to think about the fact that that framework is purposely sent by anti-sex workers who um like like um uh, who actually they don't give a shit about trafficking victims either you know it's not like because uh, many trafficking victims they, they either like sometimes they become sex workers because they understood that they had like after it like they actually go back to it but they go back to it in a different way um it's it's kind of like like you know i understand that like my english right now is perfect but my english a few years ago was not perfect i come from croatia and a lot of people don't know that um, and I had a very thick accent and when I came to high school, I was 14, everybody thought I was a whore. So <laughs> I became one by choice. Um, but, you know, I, do, I very much understand and I very much empathize with the fact that, you know, East Asian and Eastern European women, they're incredibly, incredibly like objectified in that way. And that's very much true. And that's very much true even like in sex work because it's like, you know, the, the moment they find out on Balkan, they're like, oh, speak to me in that way. It's like, no, fuck you, like, pay me. Like, you know, 
um, you know, I, I'm friends with many black escorts who, you know, they have to pretend like, yes, slave master, I will, you know, punch the shit. Like, there's a lot of kink in that. But here's the thing. In sex work, you can capitalize off of it. You can be like, okay, I will take this piece of shit white man, fuck him in the ass, and make, you know, $500 in an hour. God bless, you know? Like, uh, while it's different when people go to Haiti, UN peacekeepers who were making a, a child trafficking uh, cycle, that's very different. Very, very different. And usually that happens from white people actually going to those countries, like white people going to Thailand. Um, where sex work is kind of like on a weird thing where some parts are legal, some parts are not okay, you know? But if you're a Westerner, you can exploit anything. Uh, so, so I really do empathize, but it's kind of like that's not listening to most of sex workers who are marginalized people. So, and it's like, yeah, it's a conversation I've had before. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 I feel you. Yeah. 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 So, again, great presentation. Um, I was, I was, I'm interested in New Zealand. And mm -hmm. What did sex workers do there for them to get full decriminalization? Was there a big mobilization? Was there unionization? No, I'm sure. I'm sure they have. Um, I I can't tell you 100 percent because I you know I. I only started doing sex work like two years ago and I found out about New Zealand very recently. Um, but probably, I mean like, I'm sure that that's something you could look into like online and just like, on, you know, New Zealand sex workers. I hope you could throw it out to the room mm -hmm. if anyone knows in the room. That's well, like, workers in New Zealand, they're much better organized mm -hmm. than here mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. They had a nurse's strike a few years ago and mm -hmm. lasted 15 minutes. They're just like, all oh, the nurses just yeah. walked out and got the demand because... Yeah. Yeah, because as far as I know, I know that the government was looking to change the laws and they actually met with sex workers and asked them, what would you like, what do you think works, what doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. And if they're as, you know, efficient as he's saying, definitely, you know, like it probably would have been a little easier than it would be here. Here it's kind of like, oh no, we can't do that, no. <laughs> you know, save the children, yeah. You know, so. Ah, oh, yeah, our grand, so, you know, she can't feed the babies, you know. But, yeah. I, mean, I think it's interesting, the, co like the coalition have pushed for the change in the law. I don't know huge about it, but mm -hmm. it seems to be it's driven by the rural and the rural. The people who are behind the lights and the laundries, so they start segueing into something that's more socially progressive. Mm -hmm. You know, saving, but it's again, it's saving fallen women. In the 90s, we had all the character abuse cases. Yeah. And then this coalition with Labour uh, feminists, Labour Party feminists, at a time when the pro choice movement is pushing for change, they're in power, but they're not doing anything about yeah. it. Yeah. So again, they were looking for something that's a, mm -hmm. a cause where they can help, you know, call women without actually pushing yeah. the cause of their meant to be. It's a real rotten, mm -hmm. rotten um, connection, mm -hmm. yeah. alliance yeah, yeah. Between, between the two. Yeah. And it, I think it's interesting that both of them. Don't listen to the voice of sex no, workers. And no, you can kind of yeah. go, mm -hmm. well, the nuns never were particularly interested, but it's really disappointing when you get that from feminists yeah. also ignoring the voices mm -hmm. of women, yeah. and that's what they should be giving voice yeah. to. And given, again, the marginalization of many women who do do sex work, and again, women are not the only people who do. Um, that's kind of like, no, you're not a feminist, because I'm sorry, like, if you're not intersectional and you're not, and especially, like, for trans women, trans women are so deeply sought out in the sex industry that it's kind of like, if you're not supporting them, man, like, don't be considering yourself a feminist, because, you know, there's too many black women, there's too many Latina women, there's too many, you know, femme-presenting people who are harmed by this. I'm like, if someone's uncomfortable with sex work, it's like, that's your shit to deal with, man, like. We're all good? Do you have got more questions? I'll just want to dip now. Sorry. Cool. Okay. And um, so, no more questions? Nope. We might give.